Hi everyone, Ian here. In this video, we're going to take a look at building UIs for scripts in Cavalry. Now, this is extremely easy. And if you save a script that has a UI to a file, and that file being the scripts folder in Cavalry, which you can get to via the help menu, if you save the script in here, it will then appear in the window menu and you can access it via that. And then if you, act, if you open a script via this menu, that script is then dockable. You can move it around, save it with the scene, all that kind of stuff. If you close and reopen Cavalry, the script will still be there. Great stuff. Now, if you want to test scripts, you can actually use the JavaScript editor. So even though this window hot loads, so if you change your scripts in some way and save that file, just close the script and reopen it, and it'll bring in the latest changes. You can even pop new scripts in without closing the app. It'll still detect them. But if you want to test your script, you can test it in the JavaScript editor. So you can only have one test script at a time, but that's kind of fine. And we can do that now. So the command that you need to know uh, to create a UI is UI.show. So UI.show will show a UI. We just run that script. Here we have a blank window. Okay, so a few things that we might want to know. So UI.show sets, sorry, sets title. So first script. Now if we run that, we have a window that's got a title that's first script, as you can see there. And then UI.resize, and then let's say we want this to be 300 wide by 200 high. And then let's run that. And then here's our resized window. So something you'll notice is that this test script isn't dockable. That's just because it is a test script. Uh, you can't put this into your docking system because it won't exist the next time the scene loads. So you need to save it to file in order for it to uh, be able to be part of the docking system. Save it to, into that scripts folder that I mentioned before. Okay, so there's our window, there's our title. Let's take a look at the documentation. So in the scripts UI page of the documentation, you'll see that there's a list of widgets down the right hand side. Now this documentation is a little bit out of date. So there are a few more examples than there are when I show you and scroll down now. So there are more examples than this um, in the in the latest documentation and there are even more widgets. So when the tutorial goes up, they'll this will have been updated. And uh, yep, just you know, there's a quick start here. You can use that to kind of get going and you can just see the kind of things that we've got down the side. Now, if you want to request any additional widgets, just ask, more than happy to add them. Uh, but you let us know what callbacks you want as well, because at the moment we've only got a few callbacks, composition change, scene change and selection change. If you want to see anything else, just let us know. We can add them. So dead easy. Okay, uh, that said, let's get back into Cavalry and start building ourselves a script. And I'll show you, uh, first of all, how buttons work. So let's make a button. So do var button equals new ui.button. It's a class. Then the argument for this button is going to be the label that's on the button. So let's call this uh, print selected layers, like so. Then if we run the script, nothing will happen. It'll be a blank window. And that's because that button hasn't been added to a UI. So to add it to the UI, we go ui.add button, like so. And then if we run that, we see that the button is just kind of like filling up as much UI as it can. So let's talk a little bit about layouts. If we resize this button, so we go button dot set size, and we set the size of the button to be, uh, say, 200 by 22. The button will be a fixed size, and it's kind of pinned to the left hand side of this layout. Now, by default, the layout that we have in Cavalry is a vertical layout. So the layout in the window is a vertical layout. So if I add something like a drop down, so uh, var drop down equals new UI, whoops, UI dot drop down. And then we just go, go UI dot add drop down like so you'll see that there's a drop down menu here and the buttons underneath it. So the default layout is a vertical layout. Now we can add horizontal layouts and uh, other vertical layouts and we can nest them inside each other and all that kind of thing. And um, so you can make some really complex layouts. But uh, what we'll do is I want this button to be kind of a fixed size, but centered. So we'll make ourselves a horizontal layout. So we'll go uh, var h layout for horizontal. Ooh, hello equals new UI dot H layout like so. And then we'll do H layout dot add button. And then 
UI.add H layout instead of button. Okay, so now here we have our horizontal layout with our button in and um, our combo box, which is above. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of where we are. So if I click on this print selected layers button, we see that we get an error saying, please implement an on click function for this button. So let's do that. So this is the function that will be called when you click the button. So button dot on click equals. This is going to be a function object. So function a function object as opposed to, as opposed to an object object. Um, so this is a new function, and what we can do console dot log clicked. Okay. Now if we run this script and then click that button, you'll see that we've got a message at the bottom saying clicked. Okay, so what we can do is run some code in here. So we'll do let cell equals API dot get selection. And then we'll do for let layer ID of cell. We can do that. Hello. Um, and then we can do console dot log dot log. API.get nice name layer ID like so and then if we make something and run the script now select something we go print say we have polygon shape has printed out here because we have polygon shape selected simple as that okay so that's how we do this and lots of the widgets in cavalry have um, callbacks like on click uh, for the button or the image button and on value changed for things like the drop down and for numeric fields and stuff like that so that when something changes you can then make it so that uh, an action happens let's take a look at some things that you can do with a drop down menu because there's a couple of interesting convenience methods we can use sorry functions so let's do drop down dot add entry give it a name oops and we'll just copy and paste that. Call that world. If we run this, we see we've got two items in the drop down menu. We've got hello and we've got world. Perfect. Well, there are a couple of convenience functions we can use here. So drop down dot, whoops, not drop down, <laughs> drop down dot uh, populate font families. And then when we run that, you'll see that all the fonts on your system have been added to this menu. Okay, so this seems like a good point to nip over to the documentation and to grab one of the example scripts, which is for the drop down menu. And what this does is it creates a family style drop down and sorry, a family drop down menu and a styled drop down menu. Then it populates the family font families in one of the drop downs and then it populates the uh, styles for the family in the other. And then when the drop down menu changes, it repopulates the styles drop down menu with the particular styles for that family and then very, creates a very simple layout here. So if we run this, you'll see that we have um, a font at the top here. And then if we change that font, we get different styles populating in here. So if we go on Futura, then but yeah, you can see that the styles are basically updating as we change the font. And that is um, that's the drop down menu. Okay, so let's do something uh, with um, uh, images. Okay, so uh, if we make ourselves um, an image, so let's do let nope var image equals UI dot image uh, button. And then what this needs is a path to an image. So I don't have an image at the moment. Uh, but something that I can do in the um, in the JavaScript editor is I can give an absolute path to something. So uh, if I whoops, if I go to my finder, I can go and grab a path to um, a, an image in here, and then I can put that in here. So this is just a. a I mean, it's literally the image that goes into is the ball exclude icon in Cavalry. And then if I go uh, UI.add image, whoops, and then uh, UI.show, 
run, run the script, you see that we've got this image here in this in this big button, uh, telling me to implement an on-click function when I click it. So there's a few things that you can do. So I know that this image is 18 by 18, I think. So I can go, let's do this. So um, by the way, well, I'll go into relative paths in a second, but what we'll do is we'll do um, image dot set size as 18 by 18. And when we run that, you see that we've got this small image. It has this outline on it. And so what we can do is we can get rid of that outline as well. And we can do this by uh, calling set image dot set draw stroke to false. Whoops. And when we run that, you see that it's gone flat. And it's still asking us to set a, um, <laughs> an on-click function. And something else that we can do is set state, whoops, image dot set state. <laughs> oh man. Uh, set state button to true. And then that means that when you click it, it will um, not do anything because I haven't implemented an on-click function. Come on in. Image dot on click equals function. <laughs> Can you tell that this tutorial isn't planned? Uh, console dot log clicked. Okay, now when we run this and I click it, it's going to turn green because it's a state button and we're getting this thing saying clicked, clicked, clicked. So um, there you go. Um, and that's how you can make state buttons. You can set the size, you can make them flat by turning off the stroke draw. And uh, that's it. So something else you can do uh, with buttons and things is you can make them disabled and enabled, see the documentation for that kind of thing. Um, so for example, if someone sets a drop down to something, you can make a button not work anymore and things like that. Um, and yeah, that's um, that's kind of that. So what I was going to do is I was going to show you about relative paths. Okay, so if I go into the finder and I've got my uh, my bullet screen here and I've got an at two times icon here and that that's for what will be shown on Retina displays. In my scripts folder here, I'm going to make a folder that will be, so if I, I'm going to make a folder, so let's make a folder and call this uh, hello, and then I'm going to put this GUI demo script inside this hello folder. Now, when I go up to the window menu and go scripts, you can see that I've got a subfolder in here called hello, and then that GUI demo is in there, okay? Right, so folders that are inside the scripts folder will be seen as subfolders, which is pretty cool, great organizational tool. Okay, what if we want to have some assets for our script? Well, all you need to do in that case is just name the folder whatever underscore assets. So let's call this uh, our image uh, button uh, underscore assets. So this is going to be our our, um, our assets for our image button test script. So let's grab this uh, boolean here and we'll just um, pop it into the assets folder. I'll copy them in there. And there they are inside that image assets folder. Now I can reference these as a relative file path. So I can just replace what's there at the moment with this folder. Whoops, I should actually just replace the folder path and keep the icon. There you go. So image button underscore assets forward slash bool exclude dot PNG. Remember, we'll find the at two times for retina displays automatically. And then what we need to do is use a UI dot scripts path, I think think. I'm just going to look that up. And no, it's ui.script location. So ui.script location plus forward slash image button underscore assets forward slash build exclude. And then if I save this as a script into the scripts folder, like so, do this uh, image button test.js save that and then load this via the scripts window. So you go scripts, image button test, ta-da, we have a button image loaded in here that is a relative file path from the script location going into the image button assets folder and the bullet exclude. And you'll notice that the assets folder is hidden in here. So it's not showing up because it has that file path underscore assets. In the final part of this UI tutorial, I'm going to show you callbacks and how they work, slightly different. and if you find any callbacks that are missing when you look at the documentation, please get in touch with us on Discord and let us know what you'd like to see. And then we'll see if we can get it added for you. So let's make ourselves a button. And what we're going to do with that button is we're going to make it uh, enable or disable itself, depending on whether there is a selection in the scene or not, in the composition, I should say, or not. Okay, so what we need is a button. Var button equals new UI, hello, <laughs> dot button. And then we need the uh, button title in here. Okay. 
And then let's UI. Nope, got that right the first time. <laughs> Add button, and then UI dot show like so. And here we go. That's our UI. Great stuff. So to make a callback, what we need to do is make a callback, uh, make a function object with our callbacks in it, and then we set that callback into the UI. Okay, so let's do that. So let's make ourselves a function object. So we go function callbacks, and then inside here we need this dot on selection changed equals function, so function object, open and close brackets, and then we can do something like console.log selection changed, like so. Okay, so here is our callback function object. Then let's make a new instance of that. So we go var callback object equals new callbacks. So that's just going to instantiate a new object of this class. And then what we can do is go ui.add callback object. We can do callback object like so. And then we just need to run the script. Then see that the selection change message has appeared. And then another selection change message has appeared. And then if we select it again, selection change message, deselect it, selection change message. Perfect. So that's how that works. Okay, so what we can do now is we can get that button. So we can do auto, nope, <laughs> started to write C++ in here. That's no good. Uh, so let's uh, let cell equals API dot get selection. And then what we can do is say if cell dot length uh, oops, no, is equal to zero. And uh, then we can do, that's going to go drop down, isn't it? Yeah, whoops. Something that we would be really good to add to the JavaScript editor is automatic indentation. Uh, hopefully we'll get there. Uh, so then we, what we can do is we can do button dot set enabled. Oh, you know what? I could do button dot set enabled cell dot length is greater than zero and <laughs> then remove the other lines. I think I was overcomplicating that. There we go. Come on, right. So there we go. So the button is going to be enabled depending on whether there are any, uh, whether there's a, a selection. And we'll need to run that when the script loads just to make the make it accurate uh, when the script first appears. So if we do run script now, see the button is disabled. If we select something, the button is enabled. So uh, oh, I haven't <laughs> I haven't implemented an on click function. But see what happens when I deselect the button becomes dimmed if I select something the button suddenly appears uh, okay so that's it that's uh, kind of how you do callbacks there is also a this dot on comp changed and a this dot on scene changed uh, and like, honestly I can't stress this enough if you want to see other callbacks let us know um, like we could add them for when assets are added or removed uh, when things are renamed when things are deleted when things are created blah 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 just let us know we can add them um, get in touch and I hope you've liked the video and we'll, uh, well, I'll be doing another one on the JavaScript layer uh, as well uh, which will hopefully go up either with this video or just afterwards so let us know what you think